think the last time I was up there, they had this gigantic Bible that was probably three or four hundred years old. Just Is it Mormon? Stuff. The bookstore itself? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I because mean, there's in a lot of LDS literature. But... There was a. You have two malls across the street from each other. Two giant malls. One is starts with a Z, and the other one's like Crossroads, and Crossroads they had a. Is dead. Crossroads is a ghost town. Well, they had some like Bible bookstore up by the food court, and as soon as I walked in, I saw books I'd never even seen before about like improving your life with Christ and all this stuff. So, do do the independent readers of your magazine shop at this bookstore next to your place, or is they it? They definitely shop at Sam Weller's, for sure. I mean. Is it Mormon? No, they have a coffee shop right there in the lobby. Mormons don't drink coffee. Oh, that's right. They, what's up with that? So Mormons don't drink coffee or caffeine or? Caffeine, yeah. It's the caffeine, well, it's a, it's a, a caffeine or anything that's hot or extremely cold. I mean, they have, I wasn't raised LDS. I moved here from, from out of state, so again, I'm no expert on it. But. How about alcohol? No alcohol. Nothing good. They Pork? have what's called the, 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 I think it's the, the Pearl of Great Price, which is their, their, little, their guidelines that, that their prophets wrote that tell them how to maintain you. Treat your body as a temple. So nothing hot, nothing extremely cold, no alcohol, no tobacco, no caffeine, no drugs of any kind. Uh, and that's what, I, that's what I mean about like the oppression. You know, if you grow up in that kind of environment, any kind of outward self-expression, any kind of imbibing of life to its fullest extent is frowned upon. Do you have a high teenage pregnancy rate? Yeah, huge. Because they I mean, the people sex education. They don't want to talk about it. So it's huge here. Because some of the couples that I saw getting married at the temple, they were young, man. They were young, like they reminded me of, of high school kids, at least at least three of the six couples. Because they looked like they were 17, 18. Because their parents and their bishops and their church leaders tell them not to have sex. They tell them that making out is okay, but don't get too close, don't press your bodies against each other. So the only way that they can have sex and feel okay about it in terms of eternity, in terms of God's eyes making their way to heaven, is to get married, get married in the temple, and do it all within the confines of marriage, which is fine if that's, you know, most religions do ascribe to that kind of philosophy, but it's a basic human urge, it's a basic human desire to be close to other people. Sexuality is a basic human thing. It should be taught in school, it should be taught at a very young age, and I don't see anything wrong with people going out and exploring their sexuality at a young age and outside the confines of marriage. You gotta find out who you are, you gotta find out what you like. You can't just go and get be married when you're 18 years old because you want to get laid. I mean, if you want to get laid, go out and fuck by all means. Have a good time. Use protection. Enjoy yourself. And you'll be a better person for it in the end. I don't think you're gonna go to hell for it just because you want to get laid once in a while. Do you have a lot of swingers? I'm curious because in the Bible Belt, we go to Nashville where these preachers point their finger west and they say San Francisco is pure hedonism. Los Angeles is the city of sin. You'll be burned up in the fires of hell. But doing a count, there are more magazines for swingers and, and people personals for people hooking up in Nashville than there are in San Francisco and LA combined. So I'm curious like if you have this repression with a, a girl who's 18 and her husband who's 17 and they just got out of high school and they got married to have sex like you're saying and they have their first kid, uh, are they going to be future swingers of Utah or is it so frowned upon that it's like, no, no, you know, nobody's going to even... I don't think you'll find a, a, a huge amount of that around here, oddly enough. I mean, you can go to the adult bookstore, you're not going to find... So you have no underground worlds? I'm sure there is. Because there's a magazine a newspaper that comes out in San Francisco and we met some dominatrix a few years ago that we interviewed and we said how do you get your customers and we said they said that they they don't interview they don't put their ads in magazines but they pay people at the magazines that work for the classifieds and if a person calls in and says they're looking for a dominatrix they'll they'll tell them like oh I know this girl I know this guy I know this person that has a private dungeon you know underneath this place on Van Ness Boulevard 
And so, and so I'm curious, like, do you guys work in that capacity? I mean, how does somebody find an underground community if they just move here from Los Angeles? Wow. You go to area, one of these clubs. I mean, look at this girl right now. She's like in the blonde girl. Yeah, yeah, she's, is that, is that goth? Yeah, that's my kind of girl. Huh? That's my kind of girl. That's goth, I mean, that's, that's kind of the new goth, you know? That's, that's a girl, she probably doesn't know who the Sisters of Mercy are, but I bet she listens to him. That's what I'm saying about like the new, the new music, the new goth, you know, it's more, it's, it's becoming more mainstream, and you see that because of like Hot Topic, you go to the mall, and all these kids are shopping at Hot Topic, and I, you know, I call them the mall goths. Um, which there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Bring them in, bring them in, embrace them, you know? I want them to buy my album too. Dude, are you single? Yeah. I ask that because sometimes it's crazy. We, we put fucking ads out in magazines and stuff, and, and, and you get these girls, and they're willing to just fuck for Manson. They're like, they're like, give us the scissors, give us a razor, we'll slice off our clothes, we'll get butt fucking naked, you can film us doing anything you want, just we want to meet Manson, we want to read about Manson, we want to be in a book on Manson, we want to be in a video on Manson. And, and like, could you imagine that chick right there? Hey, would you get naked for Manson? And she fucking just rips it off on Main Street. Is that, is that going a little, is that like the Outer Limpets, Twilight Zone? Or is that is that the cop is that the goth culture, and and, and if so, no, should parents be afraid? The goth culture because you would have seen that with fans of Duran Duran in the eighties. You see that with like fifteen year old girls who were in love with NSYNC five or six years ago or whatever it was that they were popular. Yeah, so a reality TV a show culture. audition, right? If you had a reality TV show audition right here in this ice cream stand, right? Yeah. You'd have like all these girls. And they'd come in like wearing Victoria's Secret and high heels that they've never even walked in before. Yeah. What's up with that? Is that just, are, are, we, are we all trying too hard? You know, do, are we coming from a generation of divorced parents where we're not getting enough love or we're not feeling treasured? Absolutely. Absolutely. And for me personally, that's one great thing about, about the goth culture. You have a community, you have a sense of family, you have a network of friends that you can see on a regular basis. You know where they always are. Like one of, one of the nights at the club, they always show movies going on the, either the televisions or the drop-down screens or whatever. If you just want to go hang out, chat, have a beer with some friends that you know they're going to be there and watch a movie, go dance a little bit. Yeah, it's a sense of community and, and it definitely, I think, fulfills a basic human need for to belong. I mean, you know, that comes from an evolutionary standpoint. Of, you know, we used to be clans, we used to be, you know, huge families or communities that traveled together, that worked together, that did everything for each other. In our modern society, we're completely isolated. You grow up, you move out of the house, you go to college, you get a job, you move somewhere else because your job sent you there. You raise a family on your own, you're isolated from your family. You don't have friends that you grew up with in school. Okay, so we interview doctors and psychiatrists that deal with school violence. We interview people in Columbine, Colorado. And they talk about how it wasn't Manson, it wasn't Rock, it wasn't um, the fact that they were bullied. It was per parental supervision. That like the parents should have been doing a better job to watch and see. Now, should parents be supervising um, kids that come to your redemption concerts? Should should they be supervising and, and going like, ah, we want to come to this uh, show that you've been going to, and we want to like see what this band Redemption is all about and see if it's a good influence. And if it's not, you're staying home on Friday night and, you're, and we're locking you in your room. Absolutely, bring them down. Bring them down. So you can scare them. No, we don't scare them. Like I said, the music, the the image is dark, you know, and, and you have the goth tag. But if you listen to the lyrics, it's all about redemption. It's all about a personal form of redemption. It's, a, it's uplifting, it's positive. People come to our shows, they have a damn good time. They go home sweaty and tired. You, you look out and you got like 50 people crammed up next to the stage and everybody's singing along, everybody knows every word. There's nothing better than that. There's nobody beating each other up. There's nobody slicing each other in the back room. There's, 
I'm so, I gotta tell you, you got some hot girls around here. Oh, totally. there's, there's what the, the, the fuck is up with Salt Lake City? Is it the altitude? Something in the mountain water. I don't know. What'd you say? Yeah, there's more beautiful women per capita than any in other any city in the United States. Right. Any place in the world. What? It, it's it's unbelievable because I see I see women too, and I ask them and they say like, oh yeah, I'm 34, and and I swear to God they fucking look like they're 23. Yeah. Yeah. By contrast, 17 year olds look like they're 23 too, so that can get you in trouble. Are you talking about personal experience here? No. <laughs> Do you have groupies? Uh, we have devoted fans. Devoted fans. Is that the politically correct groupie? <laughs> Like, no, I'm not a junkie, groupies. I'm a substance abuse. I wouldn't say groupies, no. Groupies makes me think of, you know, like the the, the, the girls in the 80s who would follow Molly Crew around who would, you know, like suck their dicks if they hadn't taken a shower for two months. Okay, that, that, do you go on... no self-esteem. Do you go on stage, to, do you go on stage to play and wake up with strangers the next morning? Should we just say that's a yes? No. Dude, you can't even answer the question. I could, but no, I don't. <laughs> okay, so you're being modest or politically correct. Yeah. <laughs> so what's up with uh, all of these top ten models that seem to be walking off the catwalk along Main Street here? I have no idea. But it's another reason why I love living in Salt Lake City. The people, image-wise, People are beautiful here. Well, they had some show on TV with some investigative reporter that was catching all these predators, and I'm pretty sure it was in Utah where there were these guys going online and trying to hook up with these young girls. I mean, it seems like it's it's that fucking easy. It's as easy as like running into a gum stain on a New York sidewalk. I mean, I think that probably again goes to the the lack of. The lack of reality presented to people at a very young age around here, and maybe it's maybe it's everywhere else too. I mean, I can only say around here because I see it. You don't have a very predominant or effective sex education program in school. Parents who are deeply religious are not going to talk to their children necessarily about the reality of sexual predators, the, the possibility of violence, the possibility that yeah, you know, your teenage girl could get raped if she doesn't. Hang around with the wrong people. I don't know. I mean, that stuff is very real, and that's stuff that, that people should talk to their children about. The thing with the Columbine, yeah, it's absolutely, it was absolutely a parental, a parental negligence. Really, I mean, you don't know your kids are cashing guns. You have to know that your kids own all these guns. I mean, I'm not saying that parents should be 100% have their noses in everything their children do, because children need to grow up and be individuals too. So.